Happy Aloha Monday. We have Anna Albrecht here to talk to us about, you did something, I think this last, was it a week ago? Uh, two weeks ago, I think. Two, two weeks ago. <laughs> I Let's see, I first met you as I'm a pain in the butt, as always, and you had just won uh, the Hurt 100, correct? Yeah, that was last year, January. And I just looked over at her, I looked over at you and I said, well, how you feel now is how I feel when I get up every morning. You know, I was kidding and stuff. <laughs> I hope you don't feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> that. That's, if I remember correctly, that's exactly what you said too. It's like, uh, not on anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so Anna, you know, good to see you. We've had, uh, we've been able to uh, share the roads a little bit, you know, in the past year or so at various events, but, uh, I really don't know. Where'd you grow up? Where, where are you from originally? Um, I grew up in Minnesota, actually. Yeah, sure. You betcha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I grew up in the Twin Cities, like just in the suburbs south of Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, but I left at like 18 um, for the military. So I don't really call that home anymore. Um, it's where my family is, but I don't really have much else there. <laughs> oh, Mankato graduate here. Oh, no way. Yeah. yeah. Know that? Okay. Yeah. Mankato graduate a long time ago, 1969 or some nonsense like that. Oh, so okay. yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and uh, came out to uh, part of the reason I came out to, uh, I went to Colorado and then Hawaii and stuff here is because of a girl named Janae Hansen, you know, one of the Hansen girls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But wait, yes, I don't miss, uh, do, you, do you miss, let's see, a uh, high degree, high of uh, minus 15 degrees for, don't miss that, huh? Don't miss it one bit. I, I miss snowboarding. Like, I do miss that a lot and like snow sports, but I think I'd rather travel to do that than live in the cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah. really like the warmth here. And thank you for your service. I didn't realize that you're in the military. What branch did you go into? Oh, thank you. I was in the Marines. Oh, hoorah. <laughs> it's hoorah. <laughs> hoorah, that's right. Hoorah is Army. Yep. Something, yeah. <laughs> well, I, did, uh, did you do a full tour or uh, how long were you in? I just did four years and then got out. And then that's kind of how I got to Hawaii. I'm, I've been using the GI Bill and just going to school. Oh, okay. So uh, where'd you bust out? Did you bust out at Kaneohe or... Um... No, I was stationed in Camp Pendleton, California. And then, um, yeah, once I got out, then I, I had a best friend that got orders here. So I was like, oh, Lauren got orders here. So, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> and I just moved in with her and her husband and then um, ended up, they ended up leaving Island and I stayed here. Yeah, well, that's funny how the, a lot of times that's exactly what happens. You come out <laughs> with somebody they go mm -hmm. back and you, you you stick it out. Yeah, she stayed in the Marine Corps, so she's like back on mainland doing stuff there. But oh, good for her! You know, thank thank her for her service and stuff. Yeah, when awesome. you when you were growing up in Minnesota, did you do any uh, snowshoe racing, cross country skiing, any high school um, sports in there? I just I ran track and cross country uh, in high school, and I snowboarded. So no desire other than to visit, right? <laughs> yeah, I go back like at least once a year. I've been going probably twice a year for the last couple of years um, just to see family. And it's always hard. I'm always like looking for hills to run because I am so used to so much vert out here. So I go out there and it's like, man, there's nothing. <laughs> but um, it's always fun to be out there and see friends and family from home. Yeah, you can always go back, bring some cheese curds back here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe some Ludafisk? Maybe some Lefsa? Lefsa? I don't know. Yeah. Not uh, Ludafisk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess, I don't know if I, we don't have very many traditional, they got like hot dish out there. I don't know. Pretty much eat the same. <laughs> 
so how did you kind of transition into your you bust out of the marines and obviously when you're in the marines you probably didn't do any ultra running i would kind of guess since you were busy no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah um yeah when i was in the marine corps i i kind of got out of running um because i ran a lot in high school and i tried to like escape that identity a little bit like i was like i don't really want to be a runner like and I just, I just wanted to be strong. I did, I did CrossFit and I did like, I lifted a lot when I was in, um, I could do a lot of pull-ups and stuff. And then, um, then I started bodybuilding towards the end of the time that I was in. And that's when I hired Alex as a coach too. So, um, she coached me for bodybuilding and then I kind of like caught the bug. I helped crew for the speed project, like, and that was oh, like okay. 2000. 16 or 17 um I just crewed for it because I was in California and I saw these people like they ran everyone we ran from LA to Vegas it's like 340 miles and it's like a relay type thing kind of like Ragnar's but um without rules <laughs> so, <laughs> well Ragnar has a bad rep here unfortunately because oh, of the way they, yeah I don't know yeah. so it's similar to that um just style of racing um but after that, like, I was like, man, running could be really fun. So I think that was 2017 because I ran my first half marathon um, after that, which was like July of 2017. And then oh my I moved to Hawaii and then I ran my first marathon. The Honolulu Marathon was <laughs> 2017 was my first marathon. And then I signed up for Hurt the next summer. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Everyone told me it would be a good idea, but I look back and I'm like, the furthest I had ever gone was a marathon. Like I had never done anything. I think I did one 30 mile training run before I like put my name in for the lottery, but everyone's like, oh yeah, you could do it. And then I just started, I just started training and now I'm, now I'm in it. <laughs> that, that's so amazing. I mean, I can't tell you how many people that I've interviewed and people that I know that their first marathon was Honolulu. Mm -hmm. you know and it's it's a fairly easy marathon as far as course profile what a lot of people have difficulty with is obviously the heat and the humidity yeah. which which can happen and stuff but so many people i know you run fast enough it's not that big of a problem <laughs> <laughs> well, like, come on us, us us folks that are out there for six or seven hours it's like well, <laughs> I mean like people who travel for it too because it's in December right so there's people yeah. coming in and like they're used to the winter temperatures and they come in it's hot and humid like that's definitely tough but if you're if you're adapted to the heat it's not as bad but yeah it's definitely it gets rough in the afternoons <laughs> so you, you did you do any bodybuilding competitions I did one yeah, yeah. in January 2017 and when I moved to Hawaii, I planned on like continuing that. I was like really stoked on it. I really liked it. Um, and I was going to compete when I was out here, but I just started, I started running in the trails and I was like, man, I'd way rather like spend five hours out in the trails than in the gym. Like I live yeah, in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just kind of fell in love with the trails more than anything. Um, and it's just like the longer races you get to be outside longer and <laughs> yeah. yeah. And plus, we're built, we're blessed here by, uh, you know, what is it? There's 11 different microclimates that we have on the islands. And yeah. you, in, in one run, you could run, literally run into everything. But no, I was going to say you could run into everything but snow. That's not true either. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's really, I, yeah, I just got hooked on trail running. Um, and I just love it. I love the mountains here. And yeah, I just like being outside. <laughs> well, anyway, we talked a little bit about our, our good our good buddy Alex uh, Barnett, who is very hapai right now, and yeah. uh, proud of it, and still out there. Probably could still whip my butt, you know, in okay. a race and stuff easily. I know she's leaving. She's still going. Still going. I was glad to see she just got the fifty k course certified by mm -hmm. my buddy Ron Pate, you know, who over in Oahu came over and helped her set that all up and everything. So yeah. now it's a certified course. Are you going to come over for that? Do you know? Um, when is it? It is April 11th. Yeah, I don't know. I was I was maybe going to, but um, 
I'm going to Mexico now <laughs> for Easter. I don't know when I'm going to be back. <laughs> no worries no worries yeah it was it was kind of like i thought she was going to do it as part of her uh june 24th uh, uh the under the moon race and stuff but uh that, that kind of she she's got to do it i'm assuming because of her schedule and pregnancy and everything that's going on with her but uh, yeah i didn't realize you were in the bodybuilding and what what do you think um was there a downsize to bodybuilding as far as, I don't know, self-image or did you feel pressured to constantly train and constantly get bigger or, you know, from a, a female side of it? How did, how was that as far as your head goes? Um, yeah, honestly, it was, it, it was tough because like you're training for aesthetics rather than for like your performance. Um, so like I definitely preferred training for performance over aesthetics just because like I mean it's scary you're training so you can st stand up on a stage in a bikini and have people just judge what your body looks like um but so it was tough um but I also think it was really cool just to see like if I eat a certain way and if I train a certain way like you really have control over what your body looks like and just like like learning that and understanding like what it takes was really cool i have a lot of respect for the sport and stuff um but yeah i think i prefer like running and it's i mean ultra running it's more of a challenge like getting enough calories where yeah. you're like, constantly in a deficit if you're cutting for bodybuilding and stuff so yeah i think after like I kind of had to work on my relationship with food a lot too just because it was like a very restrictive lifestyle um but I think running really helped me with that because it's more like you have to eat like it and yeah. um you have to eat enough otherwise you're gonna break so yeah, yeah food I think is not bad no it's amazing <laughs> it helps you heal it helps you go so yeah I think running was like a really good thing to transition into and it helped my relationship with food and my body because i mean i'm i'm not the smallest runner either like i don't look like a typical runner i don't think i'm a little thicker but um but i can do some pretty cool things like i don't know <laughs> running, but i just broke the record for running around the island so obviously it doesn't matter if i have thick thighs or not <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I, I actually can totally relate to that. I was a football person when I was in high school and college and stuff. And, you know, I, I played football at 320 pounds. So mm -hmm. that image still st kind of stuck in my head. You know, it's yeah. still kind of stuck in my head. Oh, I shouldn't eat because I don't want to be 320 pounds again. But that's, it is amazing how your head gets in a certain way because of your relationships with food. Mm -hmm. and the environment sometimes it's like no this is what i should be or is this what i need to be right you know, yeah a lot of times when did you let's get into the whole uh, uh not too many i don't know if people realize we have separate islands here in hawaii yeah <laughs> we have the island that, that i'm on is the big island the island that you're on is oahu mm -hmm. and what got into your head that you wanted to run entirely around an island i mean was it just were you sitting around drinking a beer with somebody and it came <laughs> up um so i always wanted to do it like when i first moved here and i like made ultra friends i remember um Alyssa clark um she was the first one to like bring it up to me because she was about to move and she was like, man, this is something that I really want to, I want to do before I move. And I don't, she never, I don't think she ever got the chance to do it, but that mm -hmm. kind of like planted the seed in my head. And I was like, yeah, someday I would really love to do that. Um, but never really had a plan. And then 2019, um, I was with Alex <laughs> and like, <laughs> we, were, we were doing this just like really long run. And we were probably drinking beer on the top of a mountain and we were like, next weekend do you want to like run around the island <laughs> and literally it was like the week it was the weekend after i had finals so i was in in school and i was like i had finals all week long and then on saturday or friday whatever it is we're like planning on taking off for 
and starting the perimeter. So that was my, my first time attempting it. And, um, it was really rough. I started out kind of injured. Like I was having a lot of plantar fasciitis pain. I had a puncture wound in my heel because I stepped on glass in the ocean a couple of days before, <laughs> but, um, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> Where'd but you guys I, start out from? We started in Coppola at our friend Crystal's house. Okay. Um, and yeah, it was, it was really fun, but it got really challenging for me. And, um, I ended up, I quit at like 102 miles, and, <laughs> <laughs> but there was still, you know, 30, there's still over an ultra left. And it was like, at the time my ex is like last weekend. And I, I was just like, not totally in it mentally. Um, and I didn't want to finish it. So, but then I was like, man, now I have to do it again. <laughs> like, <laughs> like leave it unfinished. So well, that let me, let, let me tell you as, as just a short story. I was, uh, I've, I've been the eight station director for Ironman for a lot of years, not anymore, but, uh, they they were interviewing a guy an older guy who was doing ironman triathlon and he had cramped up maybe on the run with maybe 10 15 miles to go yeah and they, they pulled next to him and they they said well how long you how long has this been going on and he says oh for about you know 10 miles now and he said well why do you keep going on because i don't want to have to come back and do it again Right? Yeah. It's the worst part. It's like, it's like, man, I, I don't want to keep going, but I don't want to come back and do it again. <laughs> Cause then, so I attempted it again in just this past October and I felt like everything, everything was perfect. Like there was no way that I wasn't going to finish. Like I felt super strong. I trained really hard all summer. I felt really fit. Um, and everything went amazing like i felt really good the entire time and i stopped to pee at 99.3 miles <laughs> and there was i was peeing blood and Ooh. i was like oh, man that is not good not um what you want to see no not at all so i was like worried about that i like walked until i got to 100 and um Crystal, my friend Crystal came out and she's a nurse and she brought like one of the pee test kits and stuff yeah. and had me pee in a cup and it was like brown. Like I've never seen that color <laughs> before. And she's like, well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not very happy about this. Yeah, <laughs> your kidneys. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she, she tested my blood and she was like, I don't think you should keep going. I hydrated a whole bunch and then, um, just started walking and then, she was like, let me test your pee again. Like next time you have to go and we'll see if it gets better or worse. Um, and it got worse. Even My pee was clear, but the, um, the test strip or whatever showed yeah. like that my levels had gotten worse. And she's like, I don't think you should keep going. And I was like, no, <laughs> I made it to like 107 miles. I thought you and were my friend. <laughs> I know. I was so bummed. So this time, like, it felt pretty personal, but I kept describing it as like, it feels like a video game or something that like you get really a really hard game that you get really far in. And then like all of your memory gets deleted and you have to start over. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. I started in the same place every time. So I had in my head, I was like, okay, I know how far it is from here to here. This is probably what I'm going to feel like at this point. And I just had to keep getting past these like landmarks and, you know, past these hard moments to get to the unknown, which was like, getting to Waikiki um, yeah. and getting past 107 miles. And oh, I was just like, I was just so happy to finally make it into Honolulu because <laughs> I was like, okay, like even if I just walk the rest of it, like it doesn't yeah. matter. Like I know that I'm going to get done because there's no way we're doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> Third time's a charm, right? Third time's a charm. <laughs> what were you on the first uh, attempt? Uh, what kind of nutrition were you doing? What, what was your food source i mean the first abc time. store <laughs> no we had i think we had we had crew so um like i don't really i was with alex like we were probably eating tortillas and peanut butter and hummus yeah. and stuff um the second the second and third time i kind of did more of like what i do for race nutrition when we did the first time we kind of treated it as just like a training weekend and yeah. kind of ate whatever we had like cookies and and whatever and the 
uh, the next times I kind of, I normally, I did Carbo Pro. I always um, drink Carbo Pro the whole time. And then um, a lot of Honey Stinger. Yeah. And um, I had some muffins that I made that are like gluten-free and stuff. Um, yeah, but a lot of liquid nutrition. Just oh, okay. Not much salad then, yeah? No, I didn't really want to eat most of the time. Um, but when I when I could eat, I would eat like a honey stinger. And then every once in a while, like that deep hunger would set in. And when I like felt really hungry, I would like down a whole muffin. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I, then I just had Carbo Pro constant too. So I was at least constantly getting calories. And uh, you know, I know Alex has done uh, nutrition for a lot of years and stuff, and she's really on top of it. Was there ever a time that, like, on the first on the training run, that did you guys uh, have a disagreement about what you should eat, or did you just basically put your trust in her and just let her feed you? Yeah, I mean, I think we both we both eat differently during races, and at that point, like, I had. I had a few ultras under my belt. So I kind of knew like what worked for me and what didn't. So, and we ate, I, it's hard. I have a hard time remembering because it was so long ago. I don't remember exactly what we ate, but. Wait, this is two years ago, right? I know, but I've like, I mean, I've done it twice since. So yeah, like, well, that, yeah, this last year, this last year has been extra long. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she was really good. I remember like, she was really good at pacing us and making sure that we weren't moving too fast in the day and like that we were drinking coconut water and stuff like that um so yeah i i trust her like i i would eat whatever she told me to eat i'm sure <laughs> did, did so you had pacers uh was there uh how many people did you have as far as support team do you remember we had um we had my ex and crystal were our crew people. And then I think Wookie came and ran with us, but we didn't really tell anyone we were doing it. Like, so I, we, I never heard anything about it. And I know well, Wookie. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we just like decided the, I mean, the week before that we were doing it. So we didn't really, we didn't have a ton of support out there just because we didn't ask for it. Um, so yeah, it was just me and her most of the time. And then Wookie ran like a mile with us. But other than that, <laughs> <laughs> what a wimp. <laughs> I know he was like having a beach day with his girlfriend at the time and now they're, now they're married but yeah he like came out in his sandals and like ran with us oh I think Dwayne came out for a little bit too and ran like a little bit with us but yeah it was pretty much just me and Alex yeah yeah and so the second one was more uh purposeful shall we say and yeah exactly. How much planning did you, uh, I mean, how, how much actual sit down, let's plan this, did you do, you know, a week's worth of planning or just kind of you based it on your training attempt the first time? Um, I, I based a lot of it. I used like the same, Alex made a really good document of like, kind of like landmarks and like what uh, mile they were at and stuff. So I, I used that. And then, I mean, I, I sat down. I, I did the same thing for last time as this time. Um, like I just made a Strava route and I kind of like, I typed out like at different miles, what different landmarks there were. And then I do a lot of like mental prep before things. So like, I try to, I try to visualize the entire thing and like how I'm going to feel at this point and maybe what I need. And then I wrote those notes down for my crew. So they kind of had an idea like, all right, like she's at 80 miles like she said she might want to change her shoes at this point so like let's see if she wants to do that so yeah i i'm kind of a procrastinator <laughs> like, <laughs> that's under pressure so i waited until the week of to do that prep but um once i i kind of spend the whole week of just like mentally preparing and um thinking through different scenarios and all the things that could go wrong or um i kind of i i try to just expect the worst and hope for the best and that seems to work out. <laughs> and, and as anybody who's done ultras knows, whatever you, it, it's an old Mike Tyson joke, you know, everybody's got a plan until you get punched. <laughs> and, you know, things it's happen. That you don't expect. It's never like something is always going to go wrong and it's never what you think is going to go wrong. I actually, I got in a car accident the week before I 
did this attempt. What? Um, yeah, I totaled my car completely. I, like the freeway came to a stop and I hit the person in front of me. I couldn't stop fast enough. Um, and I had like whiplash. I had, I had, I went to the chiropractor and got adjusted, but I had a lot of chest and back pain. Like I couldn't even run the week leading up to it because it literally hurt to breathe. Um, <laughs> like, I, started, I started in pain. I was like, I didn't really, I started my heart rate was really high because I was taking really shallow breaths because I okay. couldn't get a full breath without pain. Um, but I think running like realigned my spine or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it stopped hurting. And then it was just leg pain that I was dealing with. And since the run, my chest and back have felt great. So I'm like, I don't know how that happens, but I was all worried. I was like, I'm going to deal with this pain the entire time. And I dealt with it for the first like marathon and then the rest of the 110 miles. It, it, was and this was, this was the last attempt or was this the second one? Yeah, no, this is the last, the second one I had, I was completely healthy. There was nothing that could ever go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this one I was starting like injured and <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Total car accident. And you got out there and still did it. Amazing. Oh, and yeah. just to make, make clear to, uh, to folks, uh, this uh, you did, uh, it was all, uh, it wasn't trail run, it was road run, right? All road, yeah, yeah. which is not my thing. <laughs> oh, I, I totally hear you. I mean, it's like, holy crap, you know, I, I could see a trail run, you know, not in the time that you did it, but uh, a road all the way around the island, that's, yeah <laughs> yeah it was tough and I think road just hits different you know like it's so much of just repetitive like when you're running trails it gives your muscles a break because you're going up and down and you're using different things but when you're on the, on the road it's just the same muscles like constantly and it's more impact and it hurts <laughs> and, and you probably did how almost zero training on road <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I mean, I ran, so I did a hundred on New Year's Eve on Big yeah. Island. Yeah. So I, I, I got to chase it. If you could turn around, I'd recognize you then because that's all I saw was <laughs> mine. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that was like a lot of road. But between that and the perimeter, my longest, my longest run was like 17 miles of road. And so I was like, I was pretty nervous going into it because I was like, I really have not trained very much. I, I planned on training harder, but things just like, I have a really hard time motivating myself to run road. That's pretty much it. I just like, I did some long trail days, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, hoped it all translated, but I think I had a pretty good base going into it. And I think that helped a lot. I, I totally agree with you as far as the uh, running on trails. Um, it helps your support muscles and everything. I know so many people that have weak ankles, you know, and, and they always run roads and it's like, they never get to uh, stress out the, the, everything that supports your ankle and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. which even keep having weak ankles. If you don't strengthen them, yeah, <laughs> you got to roll them every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, <laughs> We used to do it there. Used to be an HPA race. Uh, Hawaii Preparatory Academy used to have a trail run here, two loops, and uh, not a long race. It was 10k, I guess, uh, around. One year, I rolled my ankle three times, and it was like, okay, I need to, I need to change things here in order to do stuff like that. Part of my um, solution to that was equipment. So let's talk about. Um, well, we'll start from the ground up. Shoes. What kind of shoes were you wearing? Shoes. I was wearing ultras. Um, I'm on their uh, red ambassador team this year, but I've been wearing their shoes for the past couple years and I love them. I wore the Torin, the Torin 4 plush, 4.5 plush or something. It's like yeah. their thicker road shoe. Um, and I wore... Oh, you have the same ones? Yep, this yeah. is 4.5, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's a 4.5 torn plush. Yep. Um, I started I started in those and then after like 
third after 30 or 40 miles i switched into like a really old pair of torrents that i have that are like really pillowy and squishy so yeah, i was like yeah. felt good on my feet and then i had like a brand new pair of torrents that i i wore torrents the whole time oh um, okay like different pairs of them yeah yeah because i i i i i have every model of ultras probably oh, <laughs> including, okay. the, including the trail shoes and uh the temp yeah, twos the temp twos right now are the hit for me on trails i don't like those ones i had um it took all the skin off of my heels <laughs> oh. I, have, I have heel spurs though so it just like it's the back of it was too hard and just like rubbed wrong but i wear lone peaks for pretty much everything i went on a road trip or I was like traveling all all summer and fall pretty much and the only pair of shoes i brought was my lone peaks and they were great for every single trail i was on like they're just super versatile so that's my favorite shoe for sure oh i'm i'm looking forward i you know i've had lone peaks and stuff and i kind of went away from them uh but the lone peak five let's let's get a little geeky here now the yeah. lone peak <laughs> lone peak five has the ego foam which i love the ego foam is that the same is that the the same one that's in the escalantes yeah. yeah yeah that's i haven't tried the shoe yet but that's what i heard and i love how the escalantes feel it like really encourages you to like like land right here on your foot like on yeah. the balls of your feet um so yeah i'm i'm stoked to try the fives because i love how escalantes feel that's my favorite road shoe for sure oh yeah i i use <laughs> yeah, I've used those. I was using those for road road races for for a long time, and uh, they they switched to the Quantic foam on some of the shoes, which I think is the Temp has the Quantic, which it doesn't have quite as much bounce, uh, but it doesn't compress as much as the Ego, because the Ego will compress after you know couple hundred miles and stuff but yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to uh, size 12 uh alter if you hear me uh, <laughs> you don't mind <laughs> so shoes okay socks socks um man well i was wearing in gingies during the yeah. during that um yeah <laughs> I, uh, well, I, I, uh, I was one of the first customers for them. I, the last time I saw the company people was at, um, oh, the froggy one, uh, uh, ultra in California. Um, I forget the name of it, but they were out there like it, and this was 2009. And I mm -hmm. told them, I said, you know, I think you got a great product. You should get some, uh, trail socks going. And yeah. sure enough, they, you know, they branched out and stuff now. But yeah. you got you, you got a new sock sponsor. You haven't had a chance to uh, try them yet. Yeah, Lebent. Um, they're okay. an Australian company, and they have they started out as like a ski company. Like a they would fit um, skiers and in, in their boots and stuff. And they're branching out into like uh, into trail running and more mountaineering stuff. So okay. I'm excited to try them. I haven't tried them out yet, but I'm waiting on my first package with them their socks look really cool they have fountains on them so <laughs> <laughs> okay. so Good. That was cool. fun oh yeah it was the way too cool 50k back in 2009 and stuff oh long, okay long time ago you should do this race this is uh comrades where's that go to south africa it's a oh, pretty man. pretty That's well known race they uh 45k and a 70k mm -hmm. and um uh, you know Courtney's done it. Courtney DeWalter's done it. Camille Heron's done it. And okay. I mean, you're right up there, to be honest. I, I mean, no. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, Court, uh, I, sh I shouldn't, I should, I shouldn't talk about uh, those guys and stuff. <laughs> I, I'm trying to get them to come out and do some. Oh, of really? Our, yeah. I'm, I'm try I've been talking to Camille to try okay. and have her come out for like the under the moon. Mm -hmm. race and stuff but everybody's kind of uh, balancing their schedules now against western states have, yeah, have you ever thought about western states has that entered your well, head yet i'd love to i yeah i mean i put my name in um the last time or whatever but i think it's really hard to get into that one but yeah i'd love to i haven't done i've done like 150k um 
on mainland, but that's it. I haven't really raced over there. So I really want to see and just kind of see because the Hawaii races, you kind of like, they're all local. It's like you look around, you kind of know where you stack up and stuff, but it'd be fun to do some stuff on mainland and just see like if I'm competitive over there or not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, in my opinion, <laughs> you would be. But then yeah. again, I, I've seen your I've seen your feet after the Hurt 100, so <laughs> <laughs> I can run through it. It's fine, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, I have those. oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> so but, shoes, socks. Um, uh, what kind of tights do you run in, or compression um, tights, or shorts, or just anything? Just regular shorts. I don't know. I wear silkies a lot. <laughs> I don't have it. I have like two, I have like this really old pair of Reebok shorts that I always wear that are literally from like 2015. Um, and then silkies, that's usually, oh, but I tried some new long shorts this time from Lululemon. Um, oh, yeah. Thighs always chafe and I really liked those. So maybe I'll be using those more. Uh, that's a kind of a, a Courtney thing. Oh, and if the dog wants to come into frame, that's okay. <laughs> he's, been, <laughs> he's just been napping next to me. <laughs> Do you, I don't know. I, I haven't noticed. Do you run with your dog? You run with the pooch? Um, well, they're my friend Zach's dogs, but yeah, they run. They don't run a lot of road, but they're always, they run in the mountains. They're awesome. They can do pretty much any trail out here. They're basically famous on the trails. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday was yesterday we were running down this hill and this guy's like, I know those dogs. <laughs> like, I love you know them. He's like, yeah, from Coco Head. I saw those dogs on Coco Head. And I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> probably saw us too. But <laughs> I have to say, your photos are just amazing. I mean, uh, to to the point of, I haven't ever sent you a message, but don't don't show that to people because they're going to go out there and try it, and they're not as talented as you. It's amazing where you go to. Yeah, I actually, I, I don't tell people to do things anymore because I, someone reached out to me and was asking me about one of the saddles and I, I was like, oh yeah, it's like it, that one saddle, like I don't find it super difficult because it has like really secure ropes and stuff. And this guy went out there and fell and broke his collarbone and had to get rescued. And I was like, all right, so I'm just not going to tell people I don't know about these things because you don't know people's uh stuff so oh, yeah. i don't tag locations and stuff um but i think it's man it's just really special being up there like those bridge lines are just insane and i don't know i love those perspective shots because you're literally on just this narrow ridge line um and it's scary but it's just really amazing it feels cool <laughs> you should you should try when you uh, next time you're when, well whenever you get to colorado sometime mm -hmm. uh there's a a section going up to Capitol Peak that's that's called the Knife Edge. And okay. it, it literally is 3,000 foot drop off on both sides with about this much of a trail and stuff. I've done it once. My notes. <laughs> I've done it <laughs> once, but it, I, I don't think I was, um, I don't want to say sober, but I, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Well, <laughs> that was with some uh, performance enhancing uh, things. <laughs> <laughs> Helped you uh, kind of zone out a little. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's like those thoughts that we get. I don't know if it happens to you. It happened. It used to happen to me a lot where I go, man, I want to go up. This is in Colorado. I want to go up to the top of New York Peak and watch the sunset. Mm -hmm. You know, and you go up to New York, New York Peak, watch the sunset. Holy crap. <laughs> It's, it's like, dark. Oh, I got down. I got 15 miles to get back to the car. Yeah. Yep. I've done that a couple of times. I did that on Coco Head once. Me and my friend like ran up to the top for sunset, and then um, we like we had beers at the top too, and we we're like sitting up top and we we're drinking beers, and the sun goes down, and we're like, wow, that was awesome. And then I'm like, wait we don't have headlamps like we don't bring light up here and he's like quick chug your beer <laughs> gotta get down before all the lights come <laughs> we just like booked it down thankfully it's only a half mile but it was just funny <laughs> like oh we don't bring lights well I, I will i will confess to have done this it's like okay the light of my watch let's see if i can use it <laughs> 
thankfully we always have phones now so if you have to use your phone flashlight <laughs> yeah yeah back then it was like a casio watch you know and it was like oh it's yeah. got a light on it i can use that yeah. that's crazy yeah. it's stupid. not work stupid <laughs> So do you have a, a, the packs that you use? Do you have a brand of pack that you use, a, a vest? Yeah, I use Nathan. You sh I have a, a Nathan, like the Vapor Howe vest. That's like a 12 liter. Um, that's usually what I use. I also have a Ultimate Direction fast pack um, that I like to use for like really big mountain days. It can hold a lot of stuff. Do you find yourself overpacking or underpacking when you uh, put stuff in the vest? in the vest um just depends i do both <laughs> sometimes i'm over prepared and other times i'm under prepared but it always works out so <laughs> do you carry i mean do you do things like carry extra socks or anything like that i mean i always find that i just suck it up and do it with whatever yeah. i got on not for training runs like i just go out and do whatever i always try to bring extra food and extra water um just to be safe but i mean if it's there's a lot of times that if i'm doing something short i have like leftover water and snacks from the last run i did and i'm like my pack's packed and i just go um but if i'm doing something like bigger then i'll bring extra stuff or like overnight stuff bring extra clothes and stuff and you always can do the sniff test always okay <laughs> oh my gosh yeah i had um <laughs> some water bottles that still had and ladders that had uh, Carbo Pro left in them from the perimeter, and it was nasty. <laughs> I was like, "This is not okay. We might have to throw that out." <laughs> yeah, hold them up to see if uh, okay. There's nothing growing inside that I can see. Yeah, <laughs> it's not black yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, on the was it, are you going to apply uh, to have it as an FTK? The perimeter. I already did. Yeah, oh, you did. Yep. Yeah, I got the female FKT. And if Sergio wouldn't have run, I would have got, I beat the male FKT time, but um, no, I didn't beat Sergio's time. <laughs> uh, we're we're, we're uh, talking about our buddy uh, Sergio Florin. Florin, yeah. Yeah, yeah, who did it. As it turned out, the same weekend as you, you know, it was just like mm -hmm. totally, you guys picked the right weekend though, I think as far, certainly as far as the weather goes. Yeah, no, it was nice because it was cool. I think he, he got more of the rain than I did. Um, like, so I, I know he, his last, I don't know how many miles were really rough for him because it, it cooled off so much. Um, and he got cold and it was raining and he couldn't get his temperature back up. And I kind of lucked out because I got, I didn't have that much rain. Um, I did have a little bit and I had enough to give me really bad blisters, but, yeah. um, it was pretty, I mean, pretty good weather the whole time. And it was a full moon. So yeah. I just got to like look up at that when I was running in the night. Um, but we started on different sides of the island and he started in the morning and I started in the evening. So we were like on different routes the why, whole time. Why just why did you start in the evening? Um, I wanted to maximize night night time because my body doesn't really like running in the heat and uh I've learned that through uh, <laughs> trial and error. <laughs> so I get, I end up, I get like really bad heat rash and I sweat a lot. So I, and I love running at night. I, I just, I don't know. I think it feels cool. I always say night miles don't count because it just, whenever you start in the dark or something, like once it's daytime, you kind of look back at those early miles and you're like, did those even happen? Like, it feels like a dream. So I was like, if I can get two nights and one day rather than two days and one night, um, then I'm going to be able to move a lot more efficiently. Yeah, I, I, I same thing with me is if I start out for me, it's not so much running through the night, but if I start out really early, like three mm -hmm. o'clock or four a.m. Uh, four a.m. Yeah, those first hours they just don't count. They don't yeah. count at all. They're three miles, <laughs> seven miles out there. <laughs> So when you, you when you uh, ended up finishing, did you guys celebrate? Did you, uh, you know, as I'm known for, did you take a shot of fireball or anything? <laughs> it was like a really, it was a weird finish because I mean, it was just me and my crew. Like it was me and um, it was Crystal, Zach, Al and Jeremy, who Jeremy, I had, I just met him. He, he had the former FKT, he ran it in November. Um, so he came out and he, 
he did the entire he crewed the entire thing so that was amazing but wow. it was kind of just like you know it's not usually at races there's a ton of people cheering and it's this big thing and you get this big adrenaline rush and like on this one it wasn't like that it was just like me and my few people and then like just crossed the street and I was like well we made it <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah they had like a tr like the chair ready for me and they literally at the end like they picked it because I like sat down I was like I just want to sit I didn't sit for the last 20 miles I didn't let myself stop so I was yeah. just like all I want to do is sit <laughs> so I sat down in this chair and then they they literally picked up the lawn chair and like loaded me into the van <laughs> and they, they took me out of the van in the chair <laughs> to carry so, everybody knows how to do a carry <laughs> yeah, yeah it's great <laughs> did, did you stop along the way and sit you know at various points a couple of times I I tried to keep my stops like as short as possible just to not waste time and um I stopped my first time was at like 30 miles I had kind of like an aid station but I just stopped ate something quick and then I stopped and sat and changed my shoes at like 45 or something and then I ran all through the night and I didn't stop again until like 75 miles. And I changed, I sat and changed my shoes. And then like 10 miles later, I started peeing blood a little bit. So um, I just like, I, we, we tested it with the strip and it was yeah. like, my protein levels were fine and everything. Um, but I was like, okay, I need to like chill out. I just like drank a whole bunch and I got in the van and put my feet up for a little bit. Um, but every time I tried to, I don't think I ever stopped for more than like 10 minutes, except for at, I stopped at mile 100. Um, that was the next time that I stopped because I had really bad blisters. So at 100 miles, I stopped, I sat, we drained my blisters, um, rewrapped them up, and then, and then I stopped at 115 miles for my last time. And I was like, I just want to get like weight off of my feet for a few minutes and yeah. then I'm and then I'm not stopping until until we're done. What you, what'd you use on the blisters? Do you uh, did you use like KT tape or second skin or anything like that? I wrapped them in KT tape before we started, and then um, I think we put blister band aids on them. Yeah. I think like we got the tape off, popped them, put a blister band aid on, and then wrapped it again with KT tape. And uh, hopefully you documented that they documented popping the blisters and stuff. <laughs> yeah, we have pictures of the blisters. <laughs> I also have video of me like peeling my toenails off if you're interested. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so how many, let's see, how many toenails do you have now? <laughs> um, I don't know if that one counts. I got like <laughs> solid six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> with a lovely uh black toenail polish i bet <laughs> actually i don't get black toenails very often they usually just like get weak and fall off i guess i have oh. a couple that are they're definitely discolored but they're not black <laughs> oh okay okay yeah <laughs> but so along the way did you run into anything weird I, I would think because you were on the road you didn't hallucinate much no, I've actually never hallucinated during these things. Um, oh, poor baby. <laughs> I know, I wish. You can get these cool hallucinations, and I don't. <laughs> yeah, I. there's nothing really too crazy. I I was pretty focused the whole time. I just kind of, like, kept my head down, kept going. Um, yeah, I don't know. There, Everything was, like, everything actually went really smoothly. Like, there was nothing, like super unexpected that happened. I was just, I was so exhausted at the end. Like I've never, that's the furthest I've ever gone. And I was like, man, like after a hundred miles, like it just keeps, it just gets harder. Like, it's just, like <laughs> getting here. I don't know what I thought if I was going to like reach a new level and be able to put through this stuff. And I was like, man, this just sucks. <laughs> I never want to go further than a hundred again, guys. <laughs> Oh, famous last words. Famous yeah. last words. Yeah. There's plenty of 200s out there. I know, and I just know that I'm going to have to try them eventually. But <laughs> <laughs> I need on to the 100s for now. 
And uh, did since you were running mostly at night, a lot of a lot of it was at night. You probably didn't have anybody, and you had a crew with you. There was nobody saying, "Hey, do you need any help or anything like that?" or "What's up?" or um, so a couple. I had three people stop. So my crew van was this white van with no windows, and they were driving slowly next to me, <laughs> 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 and I'm just this girl running down the street by herself in the middle of the night. Um, and man, there was one time that this guy, like he, it was, I was getting creeped out from the car, but he was getting creeped out from the van and he, he like pulled up next to me and I had my headphones in. So like, I, I didn't hear him the first time, but I, I was like, what'd you say? And he's like, miss, miss, they're trying to abduct you. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, no, those are my friends. <laughs> and he's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> and just drove off. But yeah, there was like a few people that were a little concerned, like, are you okay? Do you know this van's following you? <laughs> um, that's yeah. one advantage of living in Hawaii too, is that we're lucky enough that people, people keep an eye out for other people. Yeah, I really appreciated that. Like, I mean, because it was definitely a creepy site. So yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm fine, but thank you. Because I, I appreciate that people would see that and be like, it's three o'clock in the morning. This girl's running by herself. On There's the a white van. <laughs> There's a white van following her with, we were like, we probably should have put like crew on the, on like on the vehicle or something, but <laughs> said it just looked a little creepy. <laughs> so you ran, did you run, uh, did you have a, did you set up a, a playlist or anything for you to listen to or? I, I use, I have a run happy playlist that I made for my first hurt or something. And I listened to that probably like 10 times. I don't know. I have like the same playlist. I have a couple of playlists that I have on my phone that I've like ran to so much that I can just like, I know every, I know every song, I know everything and I can just like kind of zone out to it and just go. So yeah. Beyond yeah. Things. <laughs> no, I, I, I used uh, at the Hilo to Volcano Run one year, I actually used a the uh, audible version of Born to Run. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You I know, I, to, I, I've listened to that a couple times while running. <laughs> it, it was highly, uh, the timing was great because just as I got into Volcano to do the last section, they were talking about this guy, Bonehead Billy, you know, who yeah. <laughs> that happens to be a friend of ours. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so uh when you when you run by yourself and you're you know out on the trails and stuff do you usually have headphones on i find that i have a tendency i wear headphones when i'm training but in a race you know an organized race where there's other people around i really don't um yeah when i train i sometimes listen to music um it just kind of depends on the day so sometimes i want it and sometimes i don't um but a lot of times I'll just, I'll put my phone in my vest and I'll play it out loud when I'm in the trails because there's usually no one around. And then I feel like I have, I can also like hear the nature sounds and um, yeah, I like that. But during races, I, I use it as like a tool because I, I don't need music in the beginning miles, but I know yeah. like I start getting in a low. If I say, hey Siri, play Run Happy Playlist, Beyonce is going to come on and it's gonna make me feel better in my life. <laughs> so I, I use it as like a tool rather than just like listening all the time. Um, because music helps, like it really can get you out of a low. Oh, and plus, I mean, I, not that I run far, but I run long. You do. <laughs> I'm slow <laughs> and I get bored to be honest. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's, there's points where I, I can totally enjoy nature and what's going on around me, particularly in a race and stuff. But uh, if I'm running in a certain location, which I won't say where it is, because I don't want a lot of people to come there, uh, <laughs> I need a little something because, you know, it's the same, even like on Elite you Drive, you know, there's been so many races on Elite you Drive, and I just need something to get my mind off of being on Elite you Drive, knowing exactly where I am. Yeah, especially road. Yeah, I, I always, I think I always have headphones when I run road. And when you, when you and Caleb did uh, uh, um, the 100 miler back yeah. at New Year's Eve and stuff, 
I was out there just for the 50K and stuff, but then I caught up with you guys and you guys <laughs> seem to be getting it, uh, <laughs> getting into a pretty good rhythm. So did mm -hmm. you guys talk much when you're running? Yeah, yeah, we talked and we listened to music. We pretty much ran side by side for like the entire hundred miles. Um, and that was really, that was really fun towards, there was like a time in the night that we both kind of got in a low um, and we were just kind of like moving really slow and he was in a low and I was in a low and both of us are just like dragging and I had to like kind of pull apart from him a little bit and I turned on my playlist and I was like you know what like we still had like 20 miles to go and I was like man if we're gonna if we're gonna go this slow for the last 20 miles like we're not gonna it's gonna take us forever so I just started running and then um caleb eventually caught up to me and i said to caleb i was like caleb you know what i just did i just told myself to stop being a little bitch and i started running <laughs> <laughs> i highly recommend it <laughs> and then he started running too <laughs> this this is our buddy caleb babayan who uh you know yeah. local local boy from hawaii here and stuff and mm -hmm. uh, awesome runner and uh, on the mainland right now yeah and everything that that was a priceless photo of you guys down at the pier though oh my gosh <laughs> we were so done we we kicked it in like the last the last five miles well the last we ran the last 10 miles like non-stop and once we got to elite drive like we were running like eight minute miles like eight to nines like those were our fastest miles and neither like his his phone died he was recording on strava and my watch died so neither of us have the data because i'm like we were booking it like we sprinted in like alex couldn't keep up with us she said we were running like 6 30s on the pier like as we were kicking it in but i just wanted to stop so bad i was just like get me done but yeah that is probably my favorite photo of us <laughs> like i have like the saddest peace sign <laughs> I was like, just get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Yeah. Done. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that was really special to be able to run that. He was supposed to do the 260 um, and I was going to crew and pace him. But then he got in a pretty bad accident um, oh, yeah. before and couldn't. So I was really happy to be able to just do those miles with him. And he's like one of my best friends. I, I went out to Washington this last summer and um, spent a week with him and we just ran and we're always having a lot of fun. So it was really cool to like go back to his home cause he grew up on big Island and like be able to like meet his family and do that with him. It was just really cool. Yeah, you guys, I mean, it was special to be any of us to be out there with you guys too, because yeah. he, yeah, he was supposed to do the 200 and mm -hmm. you know, didn't happen because of his car accident. So there seems to be a, a trend here. Let's break that trend <laughs> though about accidents. A hiking accident. His was oh, that's was, right. Like, out to see. Yeah, his was really bad. Um, so it was amazing that he could. I mean, he was in a sling. He ran. Yeah. <laughs> he ran a hundred miles with his shoulder like he couldn't move it. Um, and what were those? What were the light vests that you had? I forget the brand name again. Oh those are Knox, Knox, Knox. Or yeah. something. Yeah. I call it my party vest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was great because colors. <laughs> I mean, after I was driving back, I drove that way back home instead of uh, going to North shore, uh, highly visible, but you, yeah. did you, did you use it as uh, to see the road too? Does it give you good vision ahead? Not really. I don't, I think, do we have lights? I think we brought headlamps too. Did we? I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm trying to remember if I I don't think you guys had headlamps. You I no, you did. You did. Yeah, we did. I'm I can remember a picture of us with headlamps. I should be able to remember that. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> but oh. yeah, those don't um those don't light up the I don't oh, feel like okay. that much light. Yeah, because I use the uh 180 lights, the belt oh, lights yeah. and stuff. Those are awesome. Those I mean, are really nice. I use those for hurt. I love that company too, because I had one just crapped out on me one time and they just said, send it back. You know, they didn't even say send it back. They said, we'll send you a replacement. Oh, wow. Yeah. They're no, super affordable too. That's, and their batteries are really small and you just disconnect. And yeah, I really like those too. I got accused of, uh, I forget which race I was doing last year before last would have been, but, uh, 
Everybody said, uh, oh, I think that it was the race that David Laney was doing. Maybe Rocky Raccoon, uh, where he's, he would, people look at me and go, oh, Tron, here comes Tron. <laughs> you know, like I was a video game. Oh, you know? yeah. Because I know everyone up. commented on my lights too, like especially during Hurt because everything's so dark in there. If you have, I use that 180 light and a headlamp and it's like daytime in there. Yeah, yeah. And people don't understand uh, depth perception sometimes is, uh, is your best friend. It's like being especially able to see. With how technical it is, yeah. Can you even begin to describe how technical the Hurt race is? I feel like you can't really understand without pictures. I don't know. I It's hard for me because like these are the trails that I grew up running. So it's just like what I'm used to. But I spent a lot of time on mainland last year and ran trails out there. And man, it's so runnable. Like <laughs> going to like Washington or Utah and stuff like they don't. Yeah, the trails here are they're pretty gnarly. <laughs> like It's just like roots and rocks and you're always dodging something. But I also love it because it keeps my mind busy. So yeah. like, if you're just like focused on where your foot's going, there's not really anything else you can, you can deal with. <laughs> and I, uh, yeah. And I think we, uh, none of us, I, I think ever refer to our trails as single track, which is what they use their terminology on the mainlands. Oh, it's most of it's single track. And oh. you know what that means now. It's there's maybe rocks on it, but there's hardly any tree roots. There's hardly any things that yeah. will suck you in. You know, right. It's like, they, have, they have these like smooth single tracks that you can just like run. It's so fun. I I love <laughs> running out there. I I was it was hard at first because I was running with Caleb and Anthony, and they're used to running out there, and they're both incredible runners. And I was just like I felt so out of shape with them because I'm like man we don't run this continuously like out here because everything is like you you hike up a mountain basically and then you run down it like you can't really there's nothing long and runnable here and out there I was like man we just ran like 20 trail miles we ran 20 trail miles <laughs> that was all runnable so I had to it was a pretty big switch like from hiking <laughs> and, and bombing to just like running continuously <laughs> do you like ups or downs better or oh, not equal downhill. oh I'm okay a, yeah I've been working on my ups I like I I just really love running downhill it kind of reminds me of snowboarding and I love like technical and it's like I don't know adrenaline so it's really fun um but I'm working on my ups to get stronger because I usually, I mean, during hurt last year, I walked every single hill. Like <laughs> I, did not, I did not run on any hills. Um, so I would like to get to the point that I can like maybe jog a couple of them or at least sections of hills. And um, then the downhill, I, I just have a lot of fun on. So <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you ever do heart based race rate training or anything like that? I tried <laughs> trying really hard to get me to do I I had a heart rate strap and everything um but I just like couldn't really commit to it and I don't like looking at my wrist a lot when I when I run I don't know because then I'm constantly thinking about it and sometimes like if the the strap moves then it's off and I'm like I it says my heart rate is 170 and I'm walking and I don't know I didn't I was I wasn't patient enough um but I started, I, I feel like I kind of learned how to go slow last year running with Caleb and Anthony because they're very just like steady runners. And instead of basing it off of my heart rate, I just kind of paid more attention to my breath and just like, I guess, my perceived effort over my heart rate. And it helped a lot. Just like, I'm just going to go out and I'm going to run and I'm going to try to make it feel like as easy as I can. And if it gets hard then you just walk or you slow down and just finding a pace that you can maintain without getting tired um so yeah last year was the first time i kind of felt that so yeah, okay yeah I, i'm totally with you too it's like i i hate uh, i hate mile markers on races mm -hmm. i i data <laughs> i don't want to know where i'm at you know mm -hmm. i i kind of know where i'm at but i don't want to know where i'm at you know right don't tell me don't tell me what's going on just let me like zone out and if I ask, then I want to know, but otherwise I don't need to know anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, 
so uh, on um, on your pace and stuff, do you when you're when you're in a steady run and stuff, are you besides zoning out? Do you ever focus on your form and think about things like, well, my hips need to, I need to stand up a little bit more. I need to be down. I, I you know you can, I always catch myself doing this. You know, leaning uh, over. Yeah, I kind of like. I'll try to do kind of like a checklist. Like, um, I'll get into, I'll like think about my my feet, and I, at first, so I'm like, okay, where's my foot hitting the ground? And I I focus on like making sure that I'm striking right, and then I'll go up to my knees, and I'm like, are my knees going straight, or am I doing something wonky with them? And then I think about my hips, and I I do kind of a checklist all the way up my body, and like check on my form, and like that I'm like you know leaning into it, that I'm not overstriding or understriding, and I just then I get up to my head and then I go back down to my feet and then knees, hips, like shoulders, hands. Um, so I'll kind of, I'll do that kind of checklist and it just kind of makes sure that I'm doing it right. <laughs> yeah. I try to stop at the head and I, I never go up here. <laughs> <laughs> you get up here and you're like, you're doing great. And then go back to <laughs> a little positive note. <laughs> Why or am I doing this? I force myself to smile. Like even uh, if I'm like smiling, they say if you smile that it like will help your pain or something. So sometimes I'm like <laughs> I'm running and I don't want to smile, but I just try. <laughs> well, I, I get some people that will say, Well, you look so serious. And it's like, I'm trying to see the ground <laughs> and where where I'm stepping. Right. <laughs> Especially on trails. You kind of like I know I see pictures of myself and my eyes are just like <laughs> bugged out because I'm just trying not to fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you have any, is there anything, I mean, like I got asthma and stuff like that. Do you have anything chronic that goes on, you know? Um, I, I was diagnosed with asthma in like high school, but I just, I don't really struggle with it at all anymore. Um, yeah, I don't have anything huge. I, they diagnosed me with Hashimoto's um, a couple yeah, years yeah. ago, a thyroid disorder. Yeah. Um, but every time I've gotten my labs done, they've said they're within normal. So, um, I don't know. Sometimes I think that that's maybe why I'm a little bit thicker. <laughs> yeah. um, sometimes I don't have great energy. It could be thyroid, but I haven't really figured it out a whole lot. Yeah. So, and, uh, remind me again, uh, how ancient you are. You're 24. I'm 26. 26. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kim Kaiser, who uh, Kaiser Motorcycles, Kim has Hashimoto's too. And, okay. Uh, yeah, she just tries to, you know, she's she deals with it. She's a lot older than you. She's in her 40s and stuff. So, but yeah, with the asthma, I mean, I got diagnosed when I was 23 or 24 and have had inhalers, but I never use them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have the emergency inhaler you know, just around, basically to give to other people if they need it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I struggled with it in high school. Like a lot of times, like at the end of races or after a workout or something, like I would, I would have a really hard time getting air in. Like I just couldn't breathe and I would start wheezing. Um, but I also felt like a lot of it had to do with like, like anxiety around it because I would I would feel it and I'd be like, oh, I can't breathe. And then I would just start kind of panicking and then like it made it even worse. Um, and I, I didn't really struggle with it at all for after high school until I ran um, the Xterra World Championships over like a few years ago out here. And at the end of that race, I like, I couldn't breathe. And I saw Sergio at the end, actually. I like finished and I saw Sergio and he was like, Hey, good job. And I'm like, eh. like, I couldn't get any air in. I was like, I, I can't breathe. And he like walked me over to the medical tent and like, was kind of like coaching me on my breathing, like just like breathing through your nose or whatever. And I just kind of needed to like calm down. I think I was just like, I don't know what it is, but that's the last time it's happened to me. <laughs> so that, this was the, uh, the exterior run on Oahu, right? Yeah. Yeah. That happened oh, okay. like, like a few few years ago um yeah. and that's the last time I experienced any kind of asthma things but it was kind of like a freak thing I don't really know um yeah I don't know have you have you ever thought about delving into the triathlon world or anything like that I thought about it um and I have a bike I, I know how to bike and swim I I think eventually I would like to do one um like a half Ironman or something and just see how it goes 
but the thing like they're just expensive <laughs> that's really what holds me back mostly is like it's expensive and then you have to you have to ship your bike wherever the race is and stuff and I don't want to do a sprint one because I could just do a sprint one on my own I don't really need a race for it so I'd want to do a half Ironman to for my first one but um yeah maybe someday yeah that's that's like what are the blessing of when you live in Hawaii is that uh iron man or honu half iron man well yeah i can go down to hapuna and swim and then i can get on my bike go on queen k and bike and then afterwards i can run yeah you can do i don't need to give anybody 500 bucks right <laughs> yeah so races though future races have you got anything planned in the near future or mm, not not really this year i mean i'm hoping that hurt happens um yeah. so if the hurt races go on then i'll probably do like peacock in the fall and i'll do hurt um in january um i'm thinking about maybe doing like a fall like august ultra um but it kind of i'm kind of making hurt like my a race so yeah. like, it'll depend if if that happens, then I'm going to focus on that. If not, then I'll probably find something else to do. I mean, you are the defending champ. Yeah, I got to go back and see. <laughs> <laughs> Which means, I think that means you get an entry, right? Correct? Yeah, top three, uh, like, male and females get a guaranteed entry. So I got to use it. I mean, it'd be rude not to, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'll probably, I'll be at the aid station, hopefully um helping uh Benita and stuff yeah, and, she, and at Naples Center. yeah and uh, uh the uh, friend that I've I, I made a friend last year two years ago now I guess it is or was it last year when was it last hurt 2019 2020 2020 that's right we did sneak it in and stuff yeah. but uh Shannon Flynn Shannon uh, apparently is going to come over and uh run one of our races here on the big island and stuff too oh, cool okay but but yeah, I'll, I'll probably help at the aid station there. I've been trying to talk people into next year's Rocky Raccoon, which Where's isn't, that? it's in Texas. It's uh, around Houston, north of Houston in the park there. It's one of the, uh, supposedly one of the fastest hundred mile courses that there are. And, Is it road or trail? Uh, it's trail, Ooh. but it's, but it's, um, it's not it's not hills it's not real hills like we know them and stuff mm -hmm. and it's uh, well i went out two years ago with uh sylvia and and i asked her she went out and ran when we got there and started camping out and she's i asked her well what's the course like she said, oh very runnable <laughs> yeah right yeah not, not for me but for for you guys <laughs> and stuff it was very runnable and stuff yeah so it's it's a fun race i've been trying, trying to talk mark uh Rigoblia you know her husband and they going going and stuff and it's fe it's always february see that's the thing it's february oh, every year so it's so close yeah. to hurt and it's kind of like if you don't get into hurt it's a race wow. to go to on the on the mainland and stuff mm -hmm. plus i can always i can try and talk people into born to run you know louis escobar's little race and stuff yeah. but we talked a little bit about western states uh yeah. i've got plenty of friends that have done it. I mean, Lewis has done it and uh, Gary Wang is a good friend of mine. Gary's done it more than 10 times. And what? yeah, you get a gold buckle, silver, silver, hundred, you know, a thousand mile buckle and stuff if you do it 10 times. That's and cool. uh, you do it 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get into it just once. <laughs> Well, back, yeah, back in the day, it wasn't that, I don't want to say it wasn't that hard, but it wasn't, yeah. uh, there wasn't a lottery and, and stuff like that. And that's, that's kind of what you guys face nowadays is because of the running boom that's happening, especially with ultras and stuff. How, how is it, have you noticed, I'm, a, I'm sure you have, but have you noticed how much, how more busy the trails are on Oahu because of the COVID, because of the shutdown and everything? Is it, has it become do you find yourself trying to do you find yourself getting annoyed if you see too many people on a trail i mean always but <laughs> i was like these are my trails but i try to be <laughs> um it was like for 
for a little bit, I think things seemed a little bit more crowded. Um, but lately it seems pretty normal. Like I think more people just started doing outside things because there wasn't other things to do. So, um, some of the hikes were, were definitely more crowded, but I mean, if you live here, you kind of know where to go to avoid people. Um, so I just kind of avoid those or I avoid popular times because I, I like to have the trails to myself. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I'm, I'm the, I'm the same way. It got busy enough that where I go out, I don't run on Saturday and Sunday there anymore. Usually. Yeah. Because there's more people out and stuff. Monday through Friday is usually fine. It's me and the cattle and the horses in the background. Yeah. You know, and, and that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's definitely, I mean, the popular ones here are always popular. Um, but I don't know. I feel like Tantalus is always pretty safe, especially if you get deep into Tantalus. People don't really go. People do like that lower Makiki loop and stuff, yeah, but yeah. there's not usually a lot of people on the other parts of the trail. So there's always places to go that people aren't. And, and you're lucky. Uh, we're lucky in a lot of ways, too. If we carry a phone, we usually have we don't have to carry a, a beacon or. A, yeah, we have know. service pretty much everywhere. Yeah, so it's it's not too bad. Whereas I understand, I mean, I know a lot of the people on the mainland. They carry, uh, oh, what's the? Uh, it costs about five hundred bucks. There, that Garmin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, that that thing and stuff, which is probably good. I mean, you can ask ask Wiki about uh, his little his little adventure. There was those were actually friends of mine back on uh, Mountain Rescue, back oh, in the day. Okay. Yeah, when he when he had his little uh, episode. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that whole coma thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like yikes. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, I when I was on mainland just this summer and fall, I I used a Strava a lot if I was going out um, and like running by myself, I would use the Strava beacon. Um, but I don't know if that works when you don't have service, honestly. But I would always just like send someone like, hey, this is the trail I'm doing. If you don't hear from me, <laughs> that's where I am. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, we're lucky. I mean, we're lucky. Usually I know very few uh, of my friends or your friends probably that ever get harassed on the trails. I mean, or, yeah. or even out running on the street and stuff. I mean, we're lucky here. Yeah, definitely. I. And it's also nice we don't have any predators like i was scared running in washington and stuff they have like bears and and cougars and <laughs> or mountain lions so I, it was definitely an adjustment like just having to think about like animals that you can run into because here i mean all you have is hogs and then yeah. it was like you can't really get lost because if you get up high enough like you can see home <laughs> yeah like, yeah you can, see home, you can always find service so it's pretty hard to get like lost bad out here um but yeah the other places like those mountains are massive and oh. there's a lot of wildlife that you have to watch out for so yeah here we ha we here we have these as our s word but yeah. <laughs> uh, on, on the mainland they they have the other s word snakes that that too yeah see now there might be a chance if you run long enough and uh, run on the mainland and stuff you might start hallucinating snakes you know, I'm waiting for a hallucination to happen. I think it might be fun. <laughs> well, okay. I've already taken up so much of your time and stuff. I, I won't say we'll end it on the uh, uh, hallucinations. We'll have fun. But is there anything you'd like to <laughs> kind of say about, you know, or how it affects, how running affects you and what you you'd want people to do if they're maybe just starting in like you did with a uh, half marathon or a marathon? Yeah. Um, well, I want to say thanks for having me. Um, and like, yeah, I think running is just a really special sport. Like, and like, you know, they always say like, all you need is shoes in your body. And it's just like, I think it's just such a natural thing for humans to do. And like, just getting outside and, and sweating and breathing like that, that good air, you know, like, I think it's just really important. Um, for our health and it helps me with my mental health and everything and um yeah I, I think people look at running and they think that you have to you have to go fast or they go out and they try to run as fast as they can but it's like slow down <laughs> just like be comfortable just move your body outside and like it's just amazing the things that you'll see or like the things that you'll feel so yeah I think anyone that hates running maybe like 
get out in the trails and see how you feel about it. <laughs> I, I think that's a good thing. Let me uh, go ahead and I'm going to thank you again, you know, um, uh, Mahalo Nui Loa for your time and for who you are and for your smile and for uh, the backside that I see uh, when we're out together at a race. <laughs> <Right> out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to. Mahalo to Anne Albrecht for uh, talking to us about uh, quite, to be honest, quite an amazing career for uh, somebody who is 26 years old. I'm jealous. Uh, but yeah, Marine, uh, Hurt 100 winner, and uh, the FK, women's FKT for the perimeter run around uh, the island of Oahu. Quite amazing. Uh, really a super nice person and I, i'm always happy to uh have people in my life that i can tease <laughs> and uh, she puts it up she puts up with it very very well and uh it was really interesting to get to know a little bit of the backstory didn't realize she was a minnesota girl and uh certainly didn't realize she was a marine uh, thank thank you for your service again anna but again, thanks for uh, listening in and uh, hoping, hoping you enjoy our little uh, get togethers here. I'm trying to focus on uh, people that uh, live in Oahu, or uh, I should say live in Hawaii. And as we get through these times, uh, the races that they're doing, that the things that they have done that are extremely uh, amazing, to be honest. And uh, I just wanna thank Anna again for the time to be able to sit down and talk to her. And again, if you want to help out our show, you go to www.hawaiiultra.com forward slash Patreon, or excuse me, go to uh, patreon.com forward slash uh, Hawaii Ultra, and you can help out there. Otherwise, I, I'm really grateful that people will uh, give me responses as far as, uh, you know, what they think about the shows and everything. And uh, quite an amazing group of people that I've been lucky enough to have a chance to interview. So again, I hope everybody is having a, a safe day today, a dry day, hopefully. It's been a little wet here on the islands. And no matter what you're doing, please go out and stay active and show aloha.